Welcome to this Dia World panel, a panel discussion with a few giants from the events industry. My name is Hans Edman of Masters in Moderation, and I will lead the panel discussion. We will be talking about what happened in the past few months and what will happen in the future. And maybe simplicity is the new gold. The organizer of this panel discussion, of course, is Salvatore Sagone. Salvatore, would you come with me here? Yeah. So you are CEO of the EDC Group and, of course, the president of BR World Experience. Was BR yeah. World uh, at any time in danger? Well, uh, first of all, I want to say hello to everybody that is uh, listening and connected to this uh, first webinar of BR World Experience. Uh, yes, you are right, Hans. We after the pandemic uh, exploded, we had a serious doubt about uh, to do or not to do the bear world this year. But at the end, we decided to do it anyway, because I think that uh, is important to send a strong message to the market, to the clients, corporate clients, to the community, to the whole chain of uh, the event industry. Uh, the, the message is that we are here, we are alive still, even if we had to stop for some months, even if we have some problems, issues that everybody knows. But we are now in these months preparing for the new, for the next future, whatever it will be. Okay. So wow. re resilience, restart, reassuring are the three key words for the uh, next, uh, that convinced us to help anyway, to hold anyway uh, the Bear World experience this year. Bear yeah, World will be in December. This is the first message to the world that, that you're alive, that you will move on. The yeah. uh, subscription period has opened. Uh, the early bird period, I think, is until the, the 31st of July. So uh, please subscribe if you want to enter the competition. Yeah. And for this, um, discussion we have asked a few giants from the events industry to join us and talk about what happened and what will be the future salvatore shall we uh, ask our ne next guest to come in of course of course our, our next guest is jaime sanchez the coo of beyond world group jaime please join us here and hello salvatore how are you doing jaime, welcome to the bear world seminar thank you very much nice to be here we also have uh, Koya Dams of Fog Dams. Welcome, Koya. Hello, Hans, Salvatore, Heimer. Good to see you. Hello, Koya. Nice to see you. In good shape. <laughs> and our last guest is Matteo Console Camprini, the CEO of MCC GLC. Hi, Matteo. Ciao to everyone. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. So where are you calling from, Matteo? Uh, I'm in London. I'm based in my office. Is a little bit uh, empty at the minute, uh, but we are uh, very gradually coming back. To I'm, calling, I'm, office. Calling from. I'm actually in my home office, it's only next door to our headquarters, but. Um, in Germany? In Germany, yes. Heimer? I'm in South Spain, in Sevilla for the moment, uh, in one of our offices. And how's the temperature there? Let's say a little bit more than 40 degrees, but it's uh, wow. we are very close to the sea. So on the weekends, we go to the sea area. <laughs> we'll manage. And Salvatore, of course, you're in, uh, in Milan. I'm in Milan. The, the weather now is not that fine, but uh, we had a wonderful uh, weather in the last days. And uh, here the situation is uh, pretty much better than in the previous months. Mm. And, uh, we are in a quite 100% uh, normality. Uh, and so we are very confident that we will uh, come back soon to, okay. to the normality that we knew before. Great, so I'm, I'm calling from Holland, so we are spread all over Europe. Um, uh, one thing strikes me and that we're all uh, gentlemen here. There's no ladies here. I think for the next uh, panel discussion, Salvatore, we should do our best to get some ladies. We we have been room. searching for women uh, to join this webinar. We, we couldn't find it. It was uh, surprising. I mean, uh, but next for the next uh, webinar, of course, we will uh, uh, involve some uh, ladies to this panel. 
Okay, great. And we'll uh, maybe look outside of Europe as well and go into the world. So um, please, uh, gentlemen, um, let's talk about what happened. A lot happened in the last few months. Um, uh, Kolya, maybe I can ask you, um, you work worldwide and you saw the pandemic uh, travel all over the world. Where did it hit you first? It actually hit us first in China. So China went into lockdown very in the beginning of this year. And honestly, comparing it with um, SARS 17 years back, um, mm -hmm. we all figured that's going to be um, over with, OK, we may be in a um, bit of a lockdown um, in China. And we were taken um, by surprise, probably like everyone else, that it hit all the rest of the world. But the good news is that um, while China went into lockdown first, they were also the first to get out of lockdown. And we are having events since last month happening in China already. Okay, I want to learn more about that later. Uh, but that's very interesting. Akami, you also are uh, all around the world. And um, is it in uh, Spain? Um, is it? Doable in Spain. Spain had a, a after Italy had a very tough period as well with the lockdown. How are things now? Well, uh, in reality, um, we, as Kolya said, uh, uh, we were also one of the first countries in Europe, at least. Uh, and uh, it's true that we were also one of the first to come a little bit out of it, even if uh, Spain was hit very, very strongly. And Spain for us is still. Um, uh, an important, the important domestic market for a part of our business. Um, but now um, it's true that corporates are bit by bit doing things very slowly. Uh, I guess most of them have planned now some are not doing anything anymore, or at least that's a perception I have. And they all have set their meetings and uh, their their planning for September once everybody is back from holiday. So I really see, uh, especially the domestic market, starting very strongly again, even within this new normality, starting back up in, uh, in September. Okay, after the holiday period. Is that something that you uh, uh, um, experience uh, as well, Matteo? Ah, so we, we started, because we, we trade all over the world, uh, and we started with the first big event in February, being cancelled, which was a, a shock, uh, which was Mobile World Congress. Uh, we managed to deliver CES uh, in January in the US. But then after uh, February, starting from March, uh, all the events where we have a plan for the year, they switched off uh, all over the place, Europe, US. Uh, and now all our clients, uh, 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 they have cancelled uh, all the events uh, until the end of 2020. We uh, believe uh, that uh, they will uh, start uh, committing to event uh, from January 2021, uh, but it's an uncertain time right now. So you don't expect a lot of uh, uh, business coming back in the last half of this year? No. Uh, actually, the, the business as we knew it before, uh, let's say, mid of March is completely zeroed. Uh, the new business, the one of the future, the thing that we have invented over the last three and a half months, mm -hmm. that is uh, picking up and hopefully is a promising uh, uh, outlook for 2021. So you, in, in, in the uh, toughest times, you try to find new things to make business with and uh, you say it's picking up. Salvatore, how is that for you? Did you, um, uh, did you innovate your own business? Well, uh, what we are trying is what uh, everybody else is uh, trying to do, is, uh, which means to, we are trying to reinvent our business model, our approaches. I mean, uh, my role is uh, peculiar because I'm a, a publisher, an editor uh, of this uh, uh, company. And so the publishing company themselves are trying to reinvent the, themselves. So. For this reason, for example, we decided to do the Bear Festival totally digital this year, uh, trying to keep our um, most important uh, aspects, which are, which are the live presentation, which uh, that will be held uh, totally digitally, but I think it will be uh, done um, in a very engaging way. We already experienced uh, twice with uh, two local awards where 
we uh, put together the, the jury that is composed by clients and they could, uh, through the digital platform, talk and listen to the presentation of the agencies with the video, they could interact, etc. So we can uh, uh, reproduce the, uh, the same situation that uh, we had live. And in addition to this, we can involve also the audience uh, participating from outside, from uh, all over the countries that would be connected. The same would be with the award ceremonies. We have uh, many ideas regarding that. Uh, Hans, uh, thanks also to you that will uh, you will uh, that will help us in doing this. But uh, apart from my uh, company, what I'm seeing is that really uh, this pandemic has accelerated dramatically the evolving process of the event industry and in the long in the long term i think that it will take more advantages than disadvantages maybe in one year two years what we will find this is my opinion it will be a, a, a market uh, uh, that will be more rich of uh, opportunity and possibilities to offered to the clients. In these very uh, weeks or months, uh, the event industry is forced to produce almost 100% uh, digital events that we all know that uh, they don't have that great margins in terms of uh, economics, of course, but this is the moment that is a kind of a pioneer uh, moment that uh, to pioneer. Yes, that is pioneer. useful to see what will be the right balance, to experiment, mm -hmm. to make mistakes maybe, but uh, to prepare for the next era of events that will be definitely hybrids. Yeah. Uh, uh, talking about hybrid, uh, Kolya, uh, do you think if we are forced to innovate now, if we, if we are forced to renew our business plans and our outlook on the events industry, um, could we also turn that around and maybe say that we haven't been paying attention in the last few years and that maybe we could have made this change earlier? Maybe we could have, but if you take into consideration what has been happening the last 120 days, everyone is being used to teleconferencing. Um, even um, people in their retirement age start ordering online and working um, um, their checking accounts over iPhone apps, things that would not have been possible before. And it's not only our industry taking an extreme step into um, digitalization, it is, I believe, um, everyone. And this is, again, also everyone attending events. I believe the future of hybrid events um, is out there and we are already starting with more and more of these hybrid events. Um, and hybrid events have been around. We have been doing hybrid events for almost 10 years. But what is new now is that we create an experience for digital people attending and for live audiences attending at the same time on eye level. So it will be different experiences, but it will be a clear um, experience for both target groups. So you maybe uh, even enlarge your target group now? Absolutely. You will Absolutely. Your people. So, uh, Jaime, um, maybe the target group is getting bigger, like Koya says, and I think your uh, number of competitors will, will go down. Uh, a lot of uh, industry uh, uh, companies are struggling at this moment, and maybe it's uh, also one of these times that um, a, a fresh wind blows through the industry, and a lot of uh, newcomers or small companies will disappear. What's your look at? Well, for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, crisis means also new opportunities, for sure. Uh, so we have seen it in the crisis of 2008, um, uh, at that time, we were more focused uh, on, on the domestic market, on the Spanish market. Uh, now we are more international. But uh, at that period in Spain, for example, we didn't have only the world crisis. On top, we had the real estate crisis. So it was a real uh, drama uh, in, in South Europe. Uh, 
And there it was the moment of a lot of opportunities. Uh, we got much more market share of what we had uh, in the up, uh, in, from 2008 to 2012. And for sure now, the ones who can survive this period will come out much stronger. So if you have a good financial structure, if you have good processes, if you uh, know what you are doing, um, you will come out much stronger. Uh, in this case, for us, uh, we are very, very well positive, of course. Uh, nobody is positive uh, who is doing events right now because we are the last one in the industry who will come back. When I say events, I speak about corporate events because when I see to B2C uh, uh, events, they are running. We are seeing it every day, uh, events popping up uh, in, in our countries. Uh, so I think it's a moment of opportunities and we have to take it with our both hands and know where to invest right now where people are not doing anything and are just watching what will come up. Uh, so I think it's the moment um, to take advantage of, of course, the hybrid or digital online events, uh, but also uh, in our case, we have diversified a lot our company. So we see that our events division is, of course, down, but we have invested a lot in communication, digital communication, uh, new technologies, and that's totally up, even has increased in the last month. So that kept our company quite balanced in that yeah. sense. Yeah, so you're changing within your company and maybe you're saying that we should have this discussion again in January next year to see uh, how the event world has changed. Um, exactly. What we also see is a, is a shift from um, uh, the, in quality of the online meetings. We already always, we always have had online meetings. We've been meeting within our company and maybe even outside of our company. There was uh, virtual meetings, there was streaming of meetings. And there's a nice question from uh, Mary Kirillova. Thank you, Mary, for the question. She says, is there... Um, Hi, is Maria. <laughs> <laughs> is there a difference in quality? Will this period also force us to bring up the quality of uh, digital content? Matteo. What do you think? So the, the problem uh, of uh, digital, which have always been there, so television is, is the, the digital event, which is a one-way street, uh, has always been the interactivity. So the content uh, needs to be fantastic. Uh, because if you are talking uh, of something that is not interesting, very few people uh, will listen to you. And that would uh, have applied for before the COVID to nowadays. So the content is essential. What I think we have the opportunity to discover with this uh, massive shock is how can we create uh, an interaction with the audience? And so how can we interact uh, at the human level while we are using uh, a, a digital platform and the physical platform by combining the two into an hybrid event? So is the interaction, so the content uh, needs to be fantastic. Of mm -hmm. course, maybe now we need to even be more uh, concentrated on content. But I think uh, that the big uh, thing that we all are looking for uh, is how can we make uh, this uh, hybrid event uh, more interactive so that people will participate and will have the chance uh, to decide whether or not it's worth for them to go in the physical space of the event or remain in the digital space of the event, which allow people to decide whether they want to travel, they feel like traveling, mm -hmm. they also cannot travel most of the time. We are opening the possibility to have more audiences uh, uh, also from uh, different countries where, where there are less rich. And so that will be a yeah. digital divide that will be uh, favoriting this. Yes. But the, the fundamental aspect is how can we make an hybrid event more engaging. Salvatore, you were saying uh, that you have something uh, for uh, the, the, the Bay Award, uh, and we are very curious to see, and that's going to be the big thing. So if people will feel as engaged or similarly engaged as last year in Milano, that would be a fantastic success, because we know that uh, human interaction uh, is the fundamental uh, good uh, 
Can you tell uh, us more? Sorry? Can you tell us more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, starting from from the point that, uh, as I always say, the DNA of events is the DNA of human beings, which is uh, socialization. I mean, without that, the human being, the human race will uh, disappear. So we we need to come back as soon as possible to the physical events, of course. At these regards, we did a research here in Italy towards uh, corporate clients where the 82% of the companies interviewed said that uh, uh, they feel the absence, they miss the, um, the physical events, so they want to come back as soon as possible to physical events, which is a very good message for reassuring the market, which means that uh, uh, companies didn't lose trust in this medium of communication, which is a, a good point. Mm -hmm. The other point is also a question, I would say, uh, is how to create the famous wow effect through the digital events. We will uh, try to do it with um, augmented reality, virtual reality. I've seen some experiments on this on the, on the web and they were very well um, uh, practiced. And I think that uh, we will uh, find a, a, solu a good solution so too, you know. I mean, if we say that how much can a, a, a movie uh, engage us and move us through a video, why not uh, through the event? So I think the industry is uh, working a lot. And maybe um, yeah, Colia, Matteo, or Jaime can answer to this question, how to create the wow effect uh, in a digital uh, environment in order to engage uh, people. I want to know first, Salvatore, is the wow effect uh, what engages is the wow effect the thing that uh, creates the interaction or is interaction like what Theo means something else it, it could be both could be both when i speak about wow effect i think i speak about that emotion that uh, arise from engaged people mm -hmm. engaged people which could be virtual reality uh, but could be also a, a, a different way to create a, an interaction with the people. Yeah. Uh, so that, but I think okay. that Paul and uh, Jaime and Matteo yeah. would answer. Oh, yeah. Can you can you give us an example of how we can create this, uh, like Salvatore says, wow effect and um, uh, engage people emotionally in hybrid well, or virtual sessions? Well, if you want to, I I, I give you some some examples. It's true that. Uh, just to introduce ourselves to these online virtual uh, events, it's true, and that we cannot uh, uh, we cannot avoid. At the end, the viewers of an online event they are just behind a screen, like now, all the people looking to us they are just behind the screen of a few inches, and that you will not be able to change. Uh, so the, the the online event will be like that happens what happens and you have to keep the attention of x amount of minutes or hours of this person looking to the screen um so we have done a few events now where of course and i imagine most of the events agencies are doing the same where you have your creative people brainstorming of how can we change this because we all have done online events in the past or hybrid events where we send out the signal through streaming but now we are in another phase we are in the next level where we have to create this engagement um, we have done a lot of brainstorming of how of course we have been working on augmented reality on virtual reality uh, we have done uh, special apps where to go into break breakout sessions where they have some visuals etc some of the elements which we have done is to create these engagement tools is for example to send home to all the participants so certain elements which through uh, the uh, through the moment of the session they had to open they had to engage they had to do something at least they were active during the event itself even we have sent to the people a box with a key lock that they only could open 
at the moment of the event itself with a certain number which was given during the event. So these type of things we have been working a lot on to create this moment of engagement, this aperol moment, this uh, catering moment they had to do all the by themselves. Now, this is very nice, this is very fun, this is very engagement, but a live event where you have this networking moment, where you have this um, uh, live moment with your colleagues uh, from the company, these moments outside of the official uh, meetings, these moments will not be able to replace. We have done some things, we have done, for example, a networking uh, disco party, well, networking cocktail party with avatars, which was very nice. They could interact, they could uh, exchange business cards, they could have private chats, private chats, uh, private things, which was very fun, but it will never replace. Whatever we do, it will never replace I our live it. events. I mean, but uh, sure. shall, shall we just um, look back a bit sad that we're in a situation where we cannot be live at... <laughs> the uh, moments that we want to have a live meeting or is it something that we should uh, pick up from here and maybe like you described the magic of where the physical world meets the virtual world uh, um, and to see that as an add-on as an extra that we find now well i think it's a, it's an extra and we are all aware that online virtual events have come to stay and uh, uh, we will go to the hybrid events for sure. All the requests we are getting now, uh, it's not very uh, too much, the, the corporate uh, requests we are getting, but the ones we are getting is to plan hybrid events. Mm -hmm. uh, so where you have X amount of people live and the rest will be virtual. So whatever we do, we will have to face that the uh, online events or virtual online events will be uh, much more important in the upcoming years. I also say one thing, the human being, and we have seen it in the history, and we all know we forget very quickly. So in one year, if this uh, virus is over, uh, maybe we have forgotten very quickly and we are back into our life uh, events uh, constantly, and maybe we forget about uh, this this online part. So if can I give you an example? Can us. I give an example? Yeah, please, yes. So, uh, so we we used to go to restaurant before COVID. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to go to restaurant with friends and things like that. And then they were told that we were told the restaurant are closed, which for me is the similar situation that is happening in our business. The physical space is closed, and so what we have uh, experienced over the last three months. Uh, uh, the opportunity to use a company like Deliveroo or Uber Eats, where you online order your restaurant, the favorite restaurant, and you have this meal at home. And uh, actually, you had a, a similar experience because the food is exactly the same, the hamburger is the same, the Chinese is the same, but uh, you don't leave the experience of going to the restaurant. Now, I had the chance to go to the restaurant with my wife into a, a fantastic steakhouse the other day, and of course, there's no comparison. Having your uh, drink with the glass of wine with your wife and the sunset, uh, going to the restaurant is something that you want to do. What we are saying is in the future, you will go to the restaurant when you feel like going there for having a massive, beautiful experience. But if you don't fancy going to the restaurant or it's too expensive or you don't have the time, you can still order it with uh, Uber Eats uh, and Deliveroo. I think it's going to be the same thing. We all agree that the restaurant is the best, the physical event is the best, the human interaction is the best, mm -hmm. but we now have a, a massive experience on uh, what is the alternative and the combination of the two would yeah. be the future. Uh, we're we're question, uh, making a decision here, what, what do we want? Yeah. So yes, just a question. So at the end, after when the pandemic uh, will be over and uh, we will have the vaccine or whatever, and we will come back to the normality. Do you think that according to what uh, uh, has been said before, the market will the market will be bigger with the more tools, or will be smaller also in terms of revenue because the uh, pro margin profit or hybrid events or digital events will be uh, smaller? What do you think, Kolya? 
I do believe the market is going to change totally. There will be, like Jaime said, there will be um, virtual events um, that are going to stay. Um, we will appreciate coming together live much more than we did in the past pre-COVID. And I believe we will um, face a situation right now that we're um, much more thinking about return on investment than we used to. That we, um, right now, we are still in a mood where we are talking about tools and applications. And um, when was the last time on a live event you talked about technic, technical stuff, how... Um, how an LED screen would work. Everyone took it for granted. No one um, um, focused on this. Right now, lots of times we do get um, requests for proposal for hybrid events. And the first question is, what platform are we going to use? And um, my answer is always, let's move it back um, a step. Let's really think, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to get your audience to do differently after this virtual or hybrid event? And then decide which tools, which interaction makes sense. And I believe there's another thing that is extremely important. Do not translate one-to-one live to virtual. This is not happening. I'm, um, and this is not going well um, a lot of the times. I'm trying to, for the last 100 days, I'm trying to attend one virtual event a day. And I've seen extremely promising stuff and I've seen extremely horrifying um, um, stuff. And the general idea and some of the um, virtual events I attended that I liked most were done by people who did not come out of the live events industry because you are right now, we are in a competition with Netflix, Amazon Prime, a exactly. fully designed website and not the live situation because right now it can't happen. As long as international travel is not happening, international events are not going to happen. But the second everything is opening up more, we will move this together and there will be a new value in getting together. And this new value um, um, will drive the industry. Okay, so maybe getting together is enough when we get the opportunity again. And you say um, all these uh, uh, all these technique, all this um, all these tools that we have. Maybe maybe if we look for quality, it forces us to forces us to go back to what is the essence of meetings. And if we look for the essence of meetings, Salvatore is um, simplicity. The new gold. That's the motto that you have for this year's BIA. Is simply yeah. the new gold. Guys, what do you think? <clears throat> I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, we choose this theme for several reasons because uh, in these um, last months, we learned how important are the essential things. We change maybe our view of, uh, of life and we focus on the very uh, uh, the most important things in our uh, choices, you know. So simplicity means a new kind of approach to the matter. Also, uh, uh, regarding the events, uh, let's make an example. Uh, we have been talking for a long time about uh, sustainability, you know. And uh, so the new situation with the digital tools is more simple, maybe, to organize meetings or uh, events using the digital environment and not making people move from one uh, continent to the other, from one town to the others, and uh, respecting also the environment. So uh, if we see the, uh, the old situation, we will see that the, the search for simplicity will be the right choice to have new uh, sources of uh, also of uh, income, so organize more events, more digital events with the uh, uh, hybrids and uh, focusing also maybe on uh, uh, physical events that will be uh, maybe bigger with the bigger budgets and uh, and different approach. So this is the 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 reason why we choose this uh, theme. 
uh, simplicity is uh, the, the the new gold. And uh, I would also say one thing that uh, uh, Kolya was talking about. I mean, more and more the live communication industry is shifting into the entertainment uh, business. Uh, I'm uh, glad to to see that is connected Katerina Kirilova from St. Petersburg that uh, won last year the iconic uh, awards at Bea with the uh, Scarlet Sales. This year they produced the, the same events, which was physically physical last year and was a, a great, huge event. And they, they are a TV channel, Channel 5 in, uh, in Russia. They produce a, a digital event, they so had a great success, but they are used to deal with this kind of stuff because they work in the entertainment industry. And more and more, I think that we, the live communication industry is, uh, um, will be part of this business. And let's see it to what is happening also to the location. Uh, the, the most important and uh, updated location has turned the business in uh, TV studios. Now the location where they were held um, physical events are reinventing themselves also to be the uh, TV studios production uh, uh, environments. Right. Provide there, kind of, there's of course also the risk that you, if you the business model is changing of, uh, of the agencies, suppliers and whatever, also the destinations. No. If you have a very nice TV studio, there's also the risk that you still uh, produce a two-dimensional uh, meeting that you send out to the world what you are doing on the in the in the studio, and it's still not really interactive material. Is that the kind of interaction that you're looking for? Is it something else that you mean? So we we've been uh, because we are very passionate about human interaction, and so we've been working uh, a lot uh, on trying to solve this uh, element of the interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I agree with you, Jamie. That, that the, you can send element uh, prior to a meeting uh, uh, in order to engage with the audience. Uh, but what we are missing right now is the interaction with uh, the people that are listening uh, to this uh, webinar. We can see the comments, uh, but there is not the opportunity to come into the space, uh, the digital space in which we are in, uh, in a different way rather than just making a comment. Uh, and if you don't pick up the comment, you don't comment. So if someone in an audience will uh, raise a hand or stand up and say something, that's real interaction. So we are trying to give the perception of being uh, into the same space, uh, whether you are in the digital uh, or in the physical space. Is this uh, element of perception that I think uh, it's the, the different uh, denom denominator of this uh, new hybrid uh, atmosphere? Uh, so that, that's what we are trying to understand uh, going forward. If we can uh, sort out uh, the mm -hmm. problem of perception and allow the people that are not here to feel like they are here with us, uh, that would be uh, a, f a fantastic uh, thing uh, going forward. And then uh, the simplicity comes to the point that I can decide whether or not I want to go or I can then uh, join in a different way. Something like a, 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 a conversation like this, uh, 10, 15 years yeah. ago would have been a massive complexity to organize. Now it's super simple because the technology is allowing us to have this. And the, the only thing here was, was your simplicity is the new goal. So, Jaime, is, this, is simplicity the new goal? Mm, for not for event managers. <laughs> <laughs> for us, it's complexity because we have much more problems now to create this wow effect to to have i want to do something which nobody has done before which we've, uh, we all have heard a lot of times uh and if it's possible for less money the better so in reality event managers are now with a big with a bigger problem than before to create this creative tool this creative uh event um, uh, so simplicity maybe in general yes uh, for our business, I think it has created an, an, an extra complexity um, to create this, this, this wow effect. Like Matteo said, this interaction with the audience uh, that right now we see ourselves, the five of us. And as uh, Matteo said, we can read the chat or we can see maximum. So that's one of the challenges we have to, to create this interaction with 
the audience to have more than 50 people where we can have uh, right now on the screen uh, to have them interact with us. No? So I think we have a long way to go. We have a lot of possibilities because all the industry is, of course, also now trying to find new tools to launch new elements that we will be able to, to, to use for our uh, hybrid events. No? So I would say simplicity, simplicity yes, um, but we still have our clients which want to have this wow effect, which wants to have this uh, never done before. So that will be a challenge for all of us. And simplicity and complexity. Exactly. I mean, I think that complexity must be translated in simplicity. This is the challenge, I think. Yeah, okay, that's a nice challenge. I want to point out that there is an extra uh, interactive channel at this moment because uh, we are not only reading the questions in the chat, and uh, every now and then I put the questions to you, but there's also the discussion in the chat. So if this would have been a live meeting, uh, people in the audience would have started discussions uh, among themselves. So this is another channel that is happening right at this moment. And I want to uh, pick out one question. It's a question by Elling, and it was, uh, Elling put the, uh, Elling Hamza put the question in the chat a few minutes ago. Hello, Elling. Thank you for the question, Elling. Um, uh, Koya, I want to ask you this question. If we, if we don't forget it, if we pick up all the new learnings from this period and we translate them to the next period in which we have these hybrid meetings, what are the elements, the golden elements that we should not forget to incorporate in our physical meetings? What are the virtual learnings that we should incorporate in our physical meetings? This is amazing. Um, first, I have to say it's also amazing seeing all the live comments, so many good friends there joining in um, um, this webinar. Hi, everyone out there. Um, I believe, and this is a very good question from Elling. Um, um, interestingly, if you take the history of hybrid events, what happened was that in the beginning, we were starting to um, take moments from the digital world into the live world. For example, we developed the format of the um, content corporate festival idea, which came generally from digital um, ideas where you can watch a video here, um, do things at the same time, chat, send an email, and do things um, that you drive as a user, your experience, and we got this into live events. And now we are going from live events into virtual events, and a lot of times we're getting stuck in interactive web television um, and, um, um, and kill whatever we had taken already from digital into live. And I believe that now from the next move into hybrid events, taking all these potential elements into um, the hybrid world again. And I believe a bit, like Heimer said, it is um, complex. And what the complexity differs from difficulty, that there will be at least one more moment that I have to take into consideration, which I am not able at the given moment, because it's complex. And therefore, I believe we do need open platforms to work with open platforms where we can use technologies that are already out there from conferencing, but also from interaction moments and give them into a hybrid platform where I can, and then the simplicity comes in with a single sign on in one look and feel easily mm -hmm. attend, but I'm as an attendee in the driver's seat and then move from one technology to the other. But, and this is also important, do not overdo it. I've seen lots of AR and VR opportunities in, and it's also very striking that we have not seen the killer applications going through everywhere. Do not um, overrun your audience. If you're now combining millions of different features that are extremely super cool for tech geeks, um, you may be losing um, people. So therefore, it's extremely important. Focus on the core. Focus on 
what drives your ROI? What is it you are really looking forward to? And then reverse engineer agile what you need to um, um, get into this position. So we're back at the essence again. And another point, uh, Matteo, a question for you. Another point that we could learn from this period is that maybe timings in a program, uh, in, in an event program, could be um, different. What we are learning now is that the concentration span of people um, is not two and a half hours panel discussion. We chose for an hour in this discussion. And maybe even uh, in other uh, virtual events, we could maybe choose for interviews of five minutes or even less. What do you think? How, how does it compare to physical events before and after this learning period? Uh, yes, we, we understand. Uh, so we all learned uh, a lot of the last three and a half uh, months. Uh, what does it mean uh, to be uh, participating to whatever uh, platform in the digital fashion? And we all, uh, I remember at the beginning, everyone was experiencing Zoom, the new kid on the block. And there was uh, also a, a, a way of saying, uh, I am Zoom tired, because uh, after uh, four or five hours of these continuous conference call, you are absolutely tired to the point that uh, we have reduced the hour uh, of our team uh, to six hours a day, uh, because we understood very early on that uh, working eight hours was impossible. Uh, so the time and the concentration spam has reduced uh, because uh, in the digital space we don't understand why we are missing all the other senses uh, and so it looks like it's more tiring to look at the same people over the screen rather than in real life mm -hmm. that will need to be taken into consideration uh, whenever we uh, plan for a future event uh, because uh, uh, we cannot stay in front of the computer uh, for too too long uh, and maybe we need to do a uh, little uh, uh, five minutes or ten minutes uh, uh, of interaction and then uh, a little bit of a break. Will it the also difficult... change for physical events? Sorry? Is it, will it also change for physical events? Yeah, exactly. The difficulty is, uh, is the fact that when uh, we are doing a physical event, uh, which becomes an hybrid event because there's a digital component, uh, then you need to find the medium balance between the people that are seated on a chair or in a breakout room with people that are seated in their own uh, houses or offices uh, and uh, the time perception is completely different. So that will be another challenge uh, for them. So the, the problem is, uh, if you are working, uh, and I go back to the gold, if you are working in the physical event, we all know how does it work, we know the timing, uh, all the nuances of it. If you are working on the digital event, now we know a lot because we learned. What we don't know yet uh, is how to combine these two words uh, and make it uh, as uh, efficient uh, as possible and uh, possibly the gold uh, is the answer. So the simplicity is the answer, but also the gold uh, has never been, I, I've never been a gold uh, seeker in the US uh, back in the days. It was not easy to find the gold. Uh, it must be very hard to find the gold. And for us to find the new gold uh, is gonna be very hard uh, as an industry uh, because there's uh, our business uh, stake uh, and so on one hand, we need to find it uh, as soon as possible. On the other hand, it's very difficult to find it. So let's talk a bit about uh, a few minutes about uh, uh, changing our business uh, and the business uh, uh, modules, uh, models. Um, we have overcapacity in airplanes, in hotels, in venues. In uh, There's overcapacity in our companies, maybe even. How do we cope with that? Massive problem. So overcapacity is the first thing that strikes me as a an entrepreneur and I've spoken very early on with our team and I said we have built the team to deliver this amount of output and now our output is decreasing and then uh, over the course of the month the output were going down 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 and the capacity was still very high so we had the opportunity in England uh, to uh, to utilize a scheme a governmental scheme called Farlo to reduce the capacity without losing our people because this is our fundamental asset and so we have been helped with that uh, but on the other end uh, the capacity that we have retained is still higher than uh, what is needed and so we have used uh, this capacity to invent uh, the new to research into the new so right now we are uh, uh, utilizing this capacity to to try to to be our best uh, for the future okay so and, and, and now governments will help but this help will stop at, at some point, and uh, yeah. there's a new world, then how do we cope with the uh, overcapacity? Kolya, what do you think? 
I believe um, overcapacity is an issue, but um, we are lucky in the position that we have um, been working for the last five years in creating ourselves an agile agency and um, developed um, agile event management as a core. And um, lots of people who joined us in the last years um, also have a digital background. I believe the um, normal life event manager will have to develop into a hybrid event manager. So being at the same time able to deal with everything on site, but has the same knowledge of everything, how it works on the digital and virtual end. And this is um, what the future is about. And um, I believe every company who has done this switch and moved into this direction, it's extremely important. And I also be believe that especially agencies become um, different, like Jaime mentioned as um, Jaime with Beyond being um, the leading agency in Spain and one of the leading agencies in um, Europe, I believe um, they will not only survive, but they will get a bigger chunk of the business um, because clients, and this is what we're feeling as well, um, rather tr um, trust larger groups right now um, just in case because they want to make sure that they will be around um, by the time the events are happening. Happening and also mm -hmm. coming up with very um, um, sophisticated hygiene concepts to really making it possible to run the live part of the hybrid event right now. So, yes, at these regards, I would show the question of uh, Chris Viganotti that uh, asked, uh, you said the small companies will, me, will maybe easily disappear. Don't you think that the biggest will have more difficulties? Uh, biggest are like, this is a, a, an interesting question that uh, yeah, uh, I agree. Let's ask how the market will uh, reshape themselves. What do you think, dear friends? From well, my in, in my case, I think uh, for sure there will be bigger, bigger companies also uh, disappearing. It's true that if you have your, done your job well, um, you have a certain financial. Uh, um, uh, baggage so that you can hold on uh, the situation and as Kolya said very well a big company uh, they will be afraid um, we have confirmed now a live event last week with a client um, and um, the, the, the legal procedure went well we have to go through uh, a lot of processes to be able uh, but especially the fact of uh, our structure, or bigger structure, made the client feel uh, comfortable. A one-man show agency, um, clients will not feel very secure because they can disappear in whatever uh, moment, no? Uh, and that we have to all uh, accept that it's like that. Um, so in that sense, I think uh, bigger agencies will be able to focus a little bit and to, to face a little bit more the, the upcoming uh, months if they have done their job uh, well. And okay. do you think, just a question, do you think that this situation will accelerate the process of consolidation of merging acquisition in the market? Because all over Europe, the situation is very fragmented. Many players, small, medium uh, players. For sure, but Salvatore, we have seen that in the last Yes, not only due to the COVID situation. We have seen a lot of mergers, and especially more than mergers, we have seen alliances. Uh, so people working together. Uh, I mean, we all have the idea of uh, agencies. Oh, that's my competitor. Why should I work with him? I, and uh, through your job has been very important, of course, also of putting people together, getting to know each other. Uh, I mean, all the people now sitting here, we know each other very, very well. And we have worked together with projects. Uh, why can we not work together? Uh, maybe Kolya is very specialized in certain uh, element of the event industry. I, uh, my company in something else. Why can we not work together for a client? And I think we have seen that in the last uh, 10 years uh, due to all these festivals like yours or maybe associations that we got together and we got to know each other. Um, so I think that has been an important thing in our industry.
Okay. Do you mean in it together and we get out of it together? We will help each other? For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Good. What do you think, Kolya? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have um, had so many very fruitful talks with um, um, P, uh, competitors, with um, people in the market. And um, we are doing exactly what Jaime said. We are approaching projects together worldwide. Um, um, companies have been approaching us and saying, OK, we do have something here that we would like to tackle together with Fock Dams. And um, this is really a new momentum and i believe this will be the future good to know good to know mm. so in, in this last moments of this hour um uh, it's a good practice to ask all panelists for a kind of tip or some advice to the people watching but i would like to turn that around because uh, we will recognize the situation that we're all in if you would ask our audience the question that's bothering you most at the moment so Matteo, could you please share with us what's what's keeping you awake what's what's bothering you how can we help you and what would be your question to to the world maybe so my question would be so i, I am very worried uh, because my I, I would like to retain uh, my team as much as possible and uh, i we just moved into a new big office, uh, which was envisioned by the time in which we didn't know anything about the pandemic. And um, I, I would like to know, do I need to worry about the future? Yes or not? Uh, and uh, when uh, we can start working again uh, in the physical space? But I, I know that this is an answer that is very difficult to give uh, because we are in this all together that's the incredible thing about this pandemic we never experienced such an incredible thing that is it exists in every single country we are having the same problems more or less at the same time maybe with 15 days differences uh all over the world and i think uh, not even the second world war which we haven't seen uh have, have, have given such an incredible worldwide coverage of problem around the world i think your question is a question we all have and maybe uh, uh, having uh, conversations like this and sharing ideas and thoughts may bring us to an answer thank you Matteo, for your question Koya, what would be your question what's bothering you at the moment <laughs> I can only um, go with Matteo that we uh, having the biggest challenge is um, will there be um, a vaccine that will come out and um, it will be, go back to a new normal or will we continue in um, a more or less smaller hybrid event we have with um, um, groups up to 500 people back to back, but um, not very much extending this. Great. So when will you expect that there will be, will be a vaccine? Uh, th um, this is also a good question that um, I have no clue and I'd be just guessing, but I believe because it's not only us looking for it, um, um, it will be around in some time. And um, because the economics is hurting everywhere, I believe there are brilliant minds all over the world working on this to well, finding a solution there. In the future, there will be a time when we look back and we, have, we, we talk about the history pre-vaccine or post-vaccine so let's see what happens then uh, we don't know we don't know if we are going to have a vaccine and there are uh, problems like ebola that we, we don't have that's vaccine true. and uh, uh aids there's no vaccine things like this um, we may need to live without a vaccine and and we will need uh, to uh, use our creativity and collaboration around the world to find ways of coping with the disease uh, that we cannot beat Thank you, Matteo. This, this is absolutely true. And that's also a scenario that we have to uh, take into account. Kaima, what would be your question to the world? Well, more than a question, I would say a suggestion and what uh, Matteo said to this new normality. Um, I think also for our clients, which are the event managers, marketing managers, communication managers of the companies, to focus also now on this new normality, on we have to do things, they have to do things. Uh, a lot of times uh, they follow just what's going on on the market. Uh, this, this snowball effect, oh, let's see what the other one is doing. Um, uh, Hans speaking yesterday about uh, this element together. Uh, we have seen now, for example, and uh, something that nothing has to do with, with our, our industry or not so much, but 
Facebook faced a few uh, one week ago due to the uh, rights in uh, in the states the fact that suddenly one company decided to take away the publicity in Facebook and suddenly you have 250 companies doing the same they don't have their own criteria they just follow what's going on in the market so I think uh, uh, a lot of our clients they have to face now the new normality they have to go on with their events is it hybrid is it live we will be there to help them out to find a way to do this live event in certain ways i can tell you that now in spain we are doing uh, live concerts for over 1500 people uh, with security norms everybody has his own table with his chairs separated from the others and it's feasible and it's filling up. So B2C is there yet. They are doing and they are coming to the events. Why can we not do it with, with the corporate market? So I think suggestion to all of them, we are facing a problem. We are having the problem. Let's find all together the solution. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you for this uh, solution. There's a question in it and there's also an advice in it. Thank you. And Salvatore, back to you. Um, yep. We are looking at the period from this day to um, December to the Be A World Experience. Uh, there will be another panel discussion like this one, but we will invite clients from all over the world, from other continents. Yep. Um, how can we help you in the meantime? I mean, uh, just following uh, what we have just done, I mean, uh, creating uh, uh, moments to uh, share opinions uh, about what will be the future. So thanks also to you. We will organize other webinar in the next future. Uh, what I would like also to uh, recommend is to see to the call for entries for Bear World because as we have just said, there will be uh, five new categories dedicated to hybrid and digital events. So we changed a lot, the call for answers and et cetera. And uh, answering to you the question that you uh, asked to Kolya, Jaime and Matteo, that I thank very much that uh, joined us today. I want also to remark an important aspect that also Maria Kirillova, uh, five minutes ago, three minutes ago, arise. And this is very important. We all need a recognition by the local uh, government uh, towards our industry, because what happens, uh, I'm uh, directly involved in a campaign called uh, Italia Live, mm -hmm. just to make us know towards the institution, but they don't see us as a, an important uh, a voice of uh, for the development of the economic uh, uh, growth. So we need the recognition by the, the governments towards our industry and the importance that we have in the developing of the, the society. This okay. is something that uh, it really is important for okay. our industry to survive. Good point. Thank you very much, Salvatore. So this brings us to the end of this panel discussion. Salvatore, some practical notes. Uh, how can we subscribe to the competition? Yeah, just go to the website, Bear World Festival, uh, the very uh, the super early bird offer will end at the end of July, but the last deadline will be uh, in the end of October, 30th of October, and then you will find all the information. Yeah, this also, will be really an extraordinary year. So join us yeah. with new categories, which answers your question as well, Michael Mueller. Thank you for that question. There's a new category in uh, virtual. Uh, yeah. Media. Digital brand activation, digital media PR, digital shopper market, digital promotion, digital product service launches, and etc. Yeah. Okay. So find your own category and uh, subscribe to the category and, and yeah. uh, win the prize in, uh, in December. I mean, the important thing is to send a message of uh, restart. And the Bear Wood, as Jaime said, has uh, this goal to gather the community and uh, to make it grow in terms of the interconnection, networking a new uh, uh, opportunity to share knowledge. Exactly. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for this discussion, this panel, this hour of, of content. And um, thank you for your ideas and keep up the good work and keep on changing, changing this event industry that we all love so much. Thank you very yeah. much for this moment. See you soon. See you soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.